Hello everyone. I made a video a little bit over a year ago now where I was explaining my bag, my luggage, my uh, lunchbox, and kind of how I pack and how I do things. Unfortunately, it did not age very well as I no longer do a lot of the things that I did in that video. But at least there are a few things that are the same. So I thought that I would make a new video and put this one more out to the masses because the first one that I made was just for a more select group. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this video as I go through my bag and show you how I pack and what I pack and kind of explain the, uh, the bag itself as well. All right, this is my Luggage Work Stealth Air and my AeroCoast Pro 2 cooler. As you can see as I walk around, uh, I've had it for, I've had the, the lunchbox now for over a year and I've had the uh, Luggage Works for just going on about a year and a half. And as you can see, uh, walking around, the frame is a little bit bent. Uh, and that's just kind of going into the kind of bag that this is. So the luggage work has three, uh, three different distinct lines that they make. They have the Stealth, and then they have the Stealth Air, and then they have uh, the Executive. Uh, so the Stealth is a steel frame. The Stealth Air is an aluminum frame, uh, which is this one. And then the Executive is a plastic frame. Uh, the plastic frame is kind of, uh, the Executive is kind of designed to compete with um, strong bags whereas the uh, luggage works has been around for a very long time so the stealth is the one that most everybody has the biggest difference is going to be weight the stealth is about 15 pounds the stealth air is about 10 and so is the executive if i remember correctly the aluminum frame on the stealth air does not hold up very well but that being said they do have a lifetime warranty i can send it back they'll give me a loaner and i can use that loaner for uh, for you know like two months or so while it takes them to uh, to fix it um, I originally started off with the Aero Coast uh, Pro cooler and then I upgraded to the Pro 2 we'll go over that in a little bit uh, but the biggest takeaway is that the Pro 2 cooler has an EFB uh, pocket on the backhand side and that is a little bit taller so with the luggage works they're all about the same uh, the design is the same, it's just the materials that, that it's made with is different. So like I said, the Stealth has the, uh, the steel frame, the Stealth Air has the aluminum, and then the Executive has the plastic. Uh, but their pocket design is about the same on almost all of them. Uh, they have some different ones that have extra flaps on the outside, uh, but that's about uh, the biggest difference. This is going to be your normal one, the Stealth and the Stealth Air. Uh, these are the ones that you're going to see. They all come with a J-hook which is screwed in at the top. Um, a lot of this stuff is replaceable and that was kind of the reason why a lot of people use it is so that if anything happens, you can uh, usually replace a lot of the items on it. Uh, it does have this outside pocket. I just kind of use it for just kind of your in and out knickknacks. Um, put some extra sandy wipes in there and uh, uh, some of the cloths to wipe my shoes with. I also have my, my lanyard for Rotary to Airlines Group, uh, just in case I, I need, want to support a lanyard. I, I don't use lanyards for the most part, but whenever I do, I want to represent you know my favorite organization out there. Opening it up, you have this outside flat pocket. Uh, I used to put my um, trench coat liner in there, but since I upgraded the captain, I don't really have to do the walk around us. Uh, much anymore and plus the trench coat is super hot anyways you don't really need to carry a liner around uh, but you do have that pouch uh, first things first always within reach any cold weather gear especially during the winter time so I have a little beanie I have my black gloves I have an umbrella black umbrella a little Amazon basics uh, this actually is to replace the one that I lost a little while ago <clears throat> this is probably the best thing to have for your overnights uh, this or uh, for your civilian overnight. This is a light down jacket. Uh, they cost anywhere between about thirty to fifty dollars. This is um, it just rolls up into this nice little pouch. Almost all of them have a little carrying case, and uh, it goes down to about I'd say about twenty degrees Fahrenheit or so. So in the winter time, these things are 
super amazing. And then of course, because it's light and fluffy, you can crush it and not have to worry about it as well. So it doesn't take up that much space. A little dot bag with the toiletry kit items. We'll go over that in a little bit. Um, biggest thing is I don't like carrying around big bottles of shampoo or anything like that. Actually, I guess I can just go over now. Only thing full size that I carry is my deodorant. Uh, actually, I recently started carrying a few other items as, as a little bit larger. Um, I do have these little travel size, and I take the shampoo containers from the hotels, and then I fill it up with my personal uh, shampoo. These things last for about... And just these bottles alone, I can make this last for about two to three weeks or so. Um, but generally after uh, four or two, four days, I'll just top it back off again. <clears throat> now, this is the thing that is probably the most beneficial thing to my entire bag, and that is packing cubes. They make my life significantly easier with almost everything uh, that I do on these trips and these overnights. I'll show you as I start breaking it out. Uh, it also makes it a lot easier when going through security uh, because every now and then they might have a random check or you might go through a place that doesn't have KCM and they select your bag. You gotta open it up and it's really annoying when you have to fit, when they start rifling through everything, tossing stuff, much less you know, having dirty laundry in, in the mix uh, can get really I don't know, just annoying. The biggest change from my last video to this video is that I now have a bag for my shoes as well. <clears throat> Extra Ziploc bags, never know when you're gonna need them. Um, I have some, a pair of, you know, dollar flip-flops from Walmart, just in case I wanna go downstairs and, uh, you know, grab some breakfast. I have a charger for my battery that the company gives me that I have to use outside pouch so the biggest thing I want you guys to know about these outside pouches I'm a commuter so I have to travel and a lot of the times that I'm commuting I'm commuting on regional jets regional jets you're gonna have to valet your bag so you're gonna have to check it in and whenever you valet your <coughs> uh, your bag it's gonna get tossed around that's the reason why my bag is so beat up if I was uh, jump seating on you know mainline aircraft Airbuses and Boeing I would just get to put my uh, my bag into the overhead bin it wouldn't get as badly beat up on the regular but unfortunately because I'm a commuter every single flight that I go on my bag is getting messed up uh, so I try not to put anything in the outside that uh, either is poppable so some guys will put uh, some people will put their uh, shampoo bottles and things like that on these outsides I promise you you don't want to do that because the first thing that I did when I put stuff that could explode on the outside it exploded uh, so I'll put like a thermos over here so this is my fancy R tag thermos uh, that I just recently got and really really like or I'll put a bottle of water so the American Airlines um, Dasani bottle water goes in here as well so I just will have my extra bottle of water <clears throat> go to Walmart I got a little lint roller this thing's pretty cool rolls out kind of like a chapstick or a lipstick and then you know something kind of handy to have on you <clears throat> this little side pouch right here always carry a tide stick just in case you need it i highly recommend i got this from jc penny it's just a little travel shoehorn and you know definitely helps save the heels of your shoes when you're putting them on and off um always carry some extra as a commuter i always carry an extra one of the uh, uh the bag tags for the valet uh, just so i don't have to get asked you know, do you have a tag on this outside long one I've seen all kinds of things put in here but I just put a scarf it's nice and fluffy keeps me warm again a little warm item um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah that's really all I put on the outside pockets things that aren't going to explode things that aren't going to get me in trouble all right so on to the packing cubes so uh, well let me just start the video and I'll show you kind of what I what I put in here and how I pack. This is six days worth of clothes, by the way. All right, this just reminded me of another very important rule. I don't know if you notice where I put my bag, but this is actually where it's going to be for the rest of the time that I'm in this hotel. Don't ever put your bag on any furniture. Don't put it on the bed. Um, 
I've kind of broken my cardinal rule of not checking the bed before I started doing this video. Um, but I, in the first four months of working in the airlines, I brought home bed bugs. Uh, you're generally not going to know that you brought them home until it's kind of too late. Just make sure, you know, when you get into the hotel, you just check under, you know, lift up the sheets, just looking for little cr uh, creepy crawlies underneath the mattress. You can generally see them if it's a. Uh, uh, Hopefully, if they're large enough, you can generally see them. But just never, never put your stuff on here. And if you got the little um, anything with the soft cloth uh, rack that you see in some of these hotels, um, or not the cloth rack, but the almost like an ottoman uh, with that has like a cushion on the top, try not to put your bags on those either because they're they like to hide out in those those soft cushiony places. Um, when you put your bag onto a rack, make sure you inspect the rack and make sure that they're not hiding underneath the crevices. So, anyways, here's my bat. Uh, here's how I how I do it. These are small um, packing cubes. I roll up into little bundles, <clears throat> and this makes my routine fairly easy to uh, to accomplish. Every single time that I get get to an overnight, I just grab one of these bundles, place it on the sink. The bundle has rolled up underwear and socks inside of it. So I just just have to grab it and go. I packed some extra uniform shirts. I have two of them because, I, like I said, I pack for six days. You generally wear your uniform shirt for two days in a row, um, changing your undershirt and all that other stuff. Just you, you don't get too rank in this job. So <laughs> wearing it two days, I would say, especially in the summertime, is about your limit. Even in the winter time, because those heaters sometimes in the terminal, walking around from gate to gate, you can. You can start to uh, to build up a little sweat wearing your jacket as well, but uh, yeah, two days per shirt just lightens the load for packing. Same thing with bringing the uh, uniform pants. If you want to wear the same uniform pants for the entire four day trip, that generally works as well. Um, civilian clothes, or I'm sorry, just going out on the town clothes. Really, <clears throat> you don't need to pack very heavily. Uh, I bring kind of semi casual professional clothes just because you never know who you're going to be hanging out with on the overnights some people just wear shorts and a t-shirt there's nothing wrong with it the other thing to know is i brought two shirts and then i have my chino pants you know a lot of people just wear you know jeans or whatever um and the other thing is that no crew is ever going to judge you for only having the same outfit you can wear the same outfit every night that you go out with your crew and no one will care we all understand that you're packing light that you don't need to waste your room I just decided to bring two different types of dress shirts. Uh, that's just kind of how, like, how, how I like to dress. Uh, workout clothes, two workout shirts, workout pants, socks. And then I always bring my swim trunks even though I've never gone to the pool. But hey, you never know, you might get to a cool overnight where you want to, you know, go take a swim. Uh, civilian shoes or, you know, my, my going out shoes. Invest in a pair of uh, um, the inserts to... I forget what these things are called, but either way, just to make sure that your shoes don't lose their shape, especially if they're kind of nicer shoes. And then underneath that, one of these these packing uh, cubes for shoes, I can fit both, you know, a pair of running shoes and a pair of the my going out shoes. Again, this is one of those things, if you want to go out and wear shorts and a t-shirt and just wear your running shoes, you can, that's up to you. All right, moving on to my lunchbox. All right, so the Aerocoast 2 cooler, uh, I definitely like this more than a lot of the other bags that I see for lunch boxes. Uh, majority of the other bo bo lunch boxes that you're going to see are just going to be kind of just a big, big compartment with maybe a top, top compartment on and uh, another compartment on the front or the back. This one has so many mini compartments that is really useful in how you can kind of pack things. A um, little bit of flare on there to represent my past, so. Starting off on the uh, the top pocket, sunglasses, screwdriver, very useful. I use that all the time. Highly recommend this. Go down to the dollar store or the Dollar Tree and get you a little bag of gum. They have like 20 piece gums and then I'll go to Walmart and I'll grab that gigantic bag and then I'll just top off this little bag every, single, every time I go home. A uh, pair of headphones and some other knickknacks. <clears throat> So the, 
Again, the biggest change between the old one and the new one is that this one has an attached, this one is sewn on an EFB holder. So I have my, um, my company issued iPad that you can put in here, whereas the old EFB, or I'm sorry, the old uh, Aero Coast cooler did, uh, you had an attachment that you would either, that you would clip in and Velcro, and it was just, it, it was kind of large and cumbersome. Um, I really like this one. And again, this one's taller too, so you can fit a little bit more stuff in it. <clears throat> it's a really industrial uh, clip right here. You can put this onto the rack, but I found that putting this one onto the J-hook gives a little more balance and stability. <clears throat> and that's what it's designed there for as well. Uh, whereas if you use this hook, it slips and slides on the J-hook. Um, <clears throat> and the first time that you're putting it in and uh, clicking this together, Oh my goodness, like this was super difficult to click and unclick, obviously. Uh, that kind of goes away as you, uh, as you click it open and, and close. <clears throat> so again, going into the compartment, kind of things that I like about, about this one. I got a little first aid kit. That way you, uh, if, you know, somebody on the, your plane nicks their forehead while entering the aircraft. You don't have to open up the first aid bag and then, you know, right next to the aircraft, you can just give them a band-aid. Um, I use a Clarity Aloft, so I got a few of the extra uh, uh, ear foamies. I've got an eight foot or nine foot cable that I get from Five Below, just in case I, you know, need need to charge my iPad or my iPhone um, and don't have a uh, spot that's close enough. I have my normal chargers, uh, the shorter ones, but just in case I have like I need to get a little bit more distance from a plug. Uh, th <clears throat> that's what that's for. Anyways, my Clarity Loft. This is the reason why I really like this headset. Is that it's small. I can fit it in. It doesn't. I, I don't need to worry because it's got the uh, that wire frame. Uh, I've been doing this for over a year, and I'm not concerned in the slightest about damaging uh, this headset by storing it in here without the case. Um, I don't think I would trust doing that with the Bose, especially with the price paid. Um, my uh, vest in case I have to do the walk around I also as an FO put my flashlight in there I uh, have my own personal flashlight that way I didn't have to wait for everybody to get off the plane to get on and use the, the airplane flashlight to do my pre-flights uh, I have a little cheat sheet for Chicago and then my checklist that I use extra a cars pa printer paper my little baggie of kitty wings that I like to give out my sunglass case, uh, with, I don't use aviators, but they are, uh, but they uh, are in the case. <clears throat> A couple extra sanding wipes. So here's probably one of the better parts about this lunchbox is that it's got a gigantic case for the lunchbox. So actually where you're going to put your food. You can put a lot of food into this uh, into this container. Uh, man, I've gone through so many different ways of packing food. You figure out what's good for you and your diet and your personal reflection and taste of what you want to do. As an FO, I did all kinds of things to kind of cheap out. This is probably my favorite cheap out option. At uh, Walmart, it's like $2.50. Just takes, it's straight up pasta. Just, I take a bunch of water. I highly recommend you get you one of these. A little collapsible bowl. This thing holds about, I think it's like three and a half cups or something like that of water. So I'll fill this thing up with the uh, the pasta in it and basically microwave it and cook my pasta in here. It's a full on serving. Um, <clears throat> it does keep your, this lunchbox does keep your stuff relatively cold, but in case you want, you can get kind of these insert um, ice packs. Uh, a bunch of different companies make uh, you know, even strong bags has like kind of a an insert thing where it's insulated. You can put your frozen items inside there, and then kind of because it's inside of another lunchbox, it definitely keeps it frozen longer. So if you get to a hotel where you don't have a refrigerator or a freezer, you can kind of go for a second night pushing it. But you know what? It's better than you know having to throw it all out. <clears throat> That's the reason why I kind of like these non-perishable meals. Yeah, they're not super healthy for you, but they're cheap, and if I don't eat them, or, uh, you know, I can take them on multiple trips and not have to worry about them expiring. 
Well, of course, the thing that kept me alive as a first officer, my good old, my good old tuna. <laughs> Still got some leftover. <clears throat> All right, going to the front pouches. Got my battery, got my Kindle, got a charger for the Kindle. And, um, front, front pouch. Uh, I've got an extra spare battery just because my battery that the company issued me is super bulky. Um, and a couple of other documents, uh, cheat sheets for uh, you know how to do our uh, digital system, a couple receipts, things like that. <clears throat> now the pouches that I use the most are my side pouches. Here are my chargers, and here are all my pens. Because in the CRJ, we had a little sleeve for the uh, for the pens, and they would always go missing. So I'd always take these Holiday Inn pens because they're definitely the most reliable of the pens. Just stick it up in the into the slot or into the little pouch whenever I'd get into the aircraft if it was missing the pen. Got some highlighters, again, Sharpie, pencil, stylus, all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> and all the way over on this pouch. I have my allergy medication, little nasal spray, and this is another Amazon. I highly recommend you finding one in you know, whichever brand you want to find. But this is a little pouch case. I know it looks like I got a little traveling pharmacy, but that's because that's exactly what it is. It's a little traveling pharmacy. You have no idea when you get out here on a four-day trip or a six-day trip what you might come down with on day one of that trip, and then you might be stuck at a hotel. So I carry a lot of you know, random over-the-counter medication, you know, Advil, aspirin, uh, friggin' Pepto-Bismol. Uh, I've got a chronic cough, so I've got some Mucinex, um, ibuprofen, of course. And, hell, I even got, <laughs> got some rounds of doxycycline, just in case I catch something really bad drinking the water in Mexico or something. Uh, so I got a full round of uh, five days of antibiotics. You never know. Uh, I think my favorite is the caffeine pill. So instead of downing a cup of coffee and having to use the bathroom mid-flight, I can just pop a caffeine pill, and that works just as well. It's probably the most useful thing that I can think of in my in my bag, in my lunchbox that I use on the regular. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Now I get to have fun repacking. I hope that this was informative and. Uh, Thank you for paying attention for, I know that this is going to be a very long video, but I know that a lot of people liked the last video, and I hope that this was uh, pretty helpful for you. Again, I packed for six days in this bag. Uh, if you start getting into the cargo realm, you're definitely going to want to buy a bigger bag. This is the 22 inch. That's going to be the norm and the standard that you're going to see for airline, uh, airline industry. Once you start doing international 14-day trips, things like that, you're going to want to start looking into one of the larger 24, 26-inch bags. Something that I forgot to address was that as I go through my packing cubes and start using up those bundles like I was showing you, uh, when that packing cube becomes empty, I use that as my uh, dirty laundry bag kind of thing. Or I'll just bring an extra bag like I did on this one, uh, the one that was still inside, the, inside my bag. Uh, I'll use that medium-sized packing cube as my dirty laundry bag again that's kind of to be helpful especially when you know going through security or if i need to grab anything out of my bag packing cubes just make life just so much easier um especially with you know having to to grab things and just not being messy um i've seen people going through and they got to open their bag and it looks like it's going to explode so yeah packing cubes definitely make life a lot easier <clears throat> Uh, the other thing that I didn't mention was price point. Uh, so the big thing is that with those, uh, with the luggage works bags, uh, you're looking at it anywhere between about $275 to $350 for the bag. Um, that's kind of one of the things that I like about about strong bags is that they are significantly cheaper. Um, they do have a really good product. Honestly, it's kind of my... Uh, promotion gift to myself is that I'm <laughs> planning on getting a, a strong bags at some point. Um, Luggage Works ha is a good product. I mean, a lot of people use it. I know that they, they last a very long time. Uh, I think I just got the wrong model, um, but I definitely like how light the uh, strong bags is. And for the price point of an executive, you might as well get a strong bag because that's what executive is trying to be, except it's just more expensive. Anyways, that's my opinion. And uh, I hope you again, thanks for 
listening to this entire video. I hope that it was helpful for you. I know that this is a question that was on my mind when I first came into the airline industry and I wasn't sure where to really go or, you know, when I when you stop and ask an airline pilot in the terminal, like, hey, what's what's your bag? You know, like, what, what do you use? They just kind of look at you like, it's a bag. I don't know, I bought it 10 years ago. I have no idea what brand it is. Um, that's the one thing, you don't want to cheap out with bags because they do last a very long time uh, with these more expensive ones. Uh, I mean, even though mine's bent up and, you know, kind of beat, it's been like that for a while and it will probably last still for many, many more years. Uh, I just kind of like the strong bags a little bit more. Anyways, again, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, thanks.